Hello, my name is Shada Pedram, and today I will be presenting on toxoplasmosis. To start, toxoplasmosis is an infection caused by a parasite, and it actually happens to be one of the leading causes of death attributed to foodborne illness in the United States. In the U.S., we see over 200,000 cases per year, making it a rel relatively common. So parasitic infections are normally associated, typically associated with poor communities or very low-income countries. However, toxoplasmosis is considered one of five neglected parasitic infections in the United States. And NPIs are targeted for public health action due to lack of surveillance, prevention, and treatment, um, even though it is something that is easily prevented and it could be easily preventable and many people can become infected and the, it can be very detrimental. Transmission can occur in a few different ways. So first off, if you consume any undercooked meat, that is a way that you can contract this parasite. Um, even coming into con eating off of a utensil or um, plate or something that has had contact with uh, contaminated meat or fruits and vegetables, uh, that is another way you can contract this parasite. Uh, drinking contaminated water, swallowing the parasite through contact with cat feces. So this could be anything from cleaning a cat's litter box um, when it has shed the parasite in its feces to ingesting anything that has come into contact with cat feces that contain the parasite. So this could be if you have a garden in your backyard and a stray cat comes and leaves its feces behind and it comes in contact with your fruits and vegetables. If you don't wash those thoroughly, you could contract this parasite. Mother to child transmission is another form as well as receiving an infected organ transplant. However, that's very rare. Most people who become infected are not aware because they don't develop symptoms. However, some individuals will have flu-like symptoms that may last a month or more. So severe toxoplasmosis is defined as damage to brain, eyes, or other organs. This can develop from an acute infection or a reactivated infection. However, severe cases are more likely to occur in immunocompromised patients. Ocular toxoplasmosis is when toxoplasmosis is specifically in your eye. So this can actually, even healthy individuals can be at risk for this. Um, symptoms include reduced vision, blurred vision, pain, and redness of the eye. A diagnosis of toxoplasmosis uh, it just requires a blood test to check for antibodies to the parasite. So those who have toxoplasmosis will have the antibodies present in their blood, and those who do not, um, who do not have toxoplasmosis, will not have the antibodies. So high risk groups include infants born to mothers who are infected with the parasite during or right before their pregnancy, and individuals who are immunocompromised. So patients with AIDS or who are going under chemotherapy, just to name a couple. Prevention strategies include cooking food um, at safe temperatures, so ranging from 145 degrees Fahrenheit to 165 degrees Fahrenheit for meat, um, depending on the kind, making sure to properly and thoroughly peel and or wash your fruits and vegetables before consuming, um, as well as ensuring that you're sanitizing all of your cutting boards, dishes, utensils, counters, anything coming into contact with um, raw meat or unwashed fruits and vegetables. If you are a cat owner, a way to prevent toxoplasmosis is to ensure that you change the litter box daily and there's a very specific reason for this. The parasite um, does not become infectious in cat feces until one to five days after it's been shed in the feces. So if you're changing it daily, you have very minimal risk of um, contracting it even if your cat does have the parasite. If you are pregnant or immunocompromised, avoid cats and changing litter boxes if possible. So in order to manage this, most healthy individuals recover without treatment. Pregnant women and infants can be treated um, with medication, but the parasite will not be entirely gone. So this means that the parasite will stay in the tissue, but be less active or be dormant for a while and has the capability to be reactive later on. Um, individuals with ocular toxoplasmosis are also prescribed medication depending on size of eye lesion and location. Um, immunocompromised individuals will need treatment as long as they're immunocompromised. So AIDS patients, for example, will have to have 
the medication for the rest of their lives. Um, specific drugs used to combat this are pyrimethamine, also known commonly as daraprim, and sulfadiazine, which is used in, in conjunction with daraprim. In conclusion, toxoplasmosis is relatively common, easily preventable, potentially very damaging, and extremely neglected. Together, we can combat this potentially debil debilitating infection by spreading awareness and educating those around us on prevention. Thank you so much.